can look at. Well, it's still honor, but um, last week, uh, the last time we had class, we we're looking at what honor was not. And we saw the many things that honor was not. We saw that honor was not, um, honor was not many things. You saw it. I don't want to have to spend my time, the little time I have to teach. I don't want to spend it. But we said that honor was not jealous or envious. We saw that honor was not um, frivolous or casual. We talked about being excessively casual as a matter of fact that the Lord did warn us at the beginning of the year that out of Malachi that our, um, our worship um, should not be excessively casual. We thought, we also said that honor is not something people earn. You know, we go around saying, uh, you know, if you want to be honored, then you have to, you know, it's not earned. Honor is conferred on people. It's a confirmation that heaven puts on man. But today I want to focus on a man who is a man in honor. That's the title of chapter three of the book, Honor. And to put this chapter in perspective, remember all the things that were done, misconceptions about honor. Remember that we're looking at honor from the lens of God. How does God see honor? What does he say about honor? What is it that, what are God's expectations of us when it comes to honor. So what one of the, if I had to sum what we've done or what we did last week so far, or last class so um, I would say that honor isn't achieved, but it's conferred by heaven. Honor is not achieved, but it's conferred on us by heaven. Today, our main focus is Psalm 49, Psalm 49. I'm going to try and read the entire chapter. I'll summarize it. And then we'll go from there to see what it is that we ought to be looking at today. Psalm 49, um, in verse 1, this is the psalm. It says to the chief musician, a son of the sons of Korah. You know, um, it's in, I want to read it in the Amplified Classic because that's how I studied it today. It says, hear this, all you peoples, live here, all you inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom and the meditation of my heart shall be understanding. I will submit and consent to a parable or proverb, to the music of a lie, I will unfold my riddle, my problem. Why should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of those who will supplant me surrounds me on every side? Even of those who trust in and lean on their wealth and boast of the abundance of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem either himself or his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the ransom of a life is too costly and the price one can pay can never suffice, so that he should live on forever and never see the pit, the grave, and corruption. For he sees that even wise men die, the self-confident fool and the stupid alike perish and leave their wealth to others. <clears throat> their inward thought is that their houses will continue forever and their dwelling places <clears throat> to all generations. They call their lands their own, apart from God and after their own names. <laughs> if you're paying attention, you'll be hearing some wisdom already dropping. It says, but man with all his honor and pomp does not remain. He's like the beast that perishes. This is the fate of those who are foolishly confident. Yet after them, men approve their sayings. Seller, pause and think calmly of that. Like sheep, they are appointed for show, the place of death. Death shall, of the dead, death shall be their shepherd, and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their form and beauty shall be consumed, for she shall be their dwelling. But God will redeem me from the power of she, the place of death, for he will receive me. Be not afraid when an ungodly one is made rich, when the wealth and glory of his house are increased. For when he dies, he will carry nothing away. His glory will not descend after him. Though while he lives, he comes himself happy and prosperous. And though a man gets praise when he does well for himself, 
he will go to the generation of his fathers who will never more see the light. A man who is held in honor and understands not is like the beasts that perish. I will summarize the gist of this scripture. The gist of this scripture is that the psalmist was looking and he probably was in a, in a, a difficult place and everybody was saying to him, do something, do something. And this was his response. His response started from, listen to me, I'm not, you know, and then he goes on to say, look, I'm not afraid. The people that surround me, I can see their own calamity surrounding them. So what's there to fear? And then he started to break things down. That we can't put confidence in our wealth. We can't put confidence in the streets that are named after us. Read it. It said so. It says foolish people that name streets after them because they are talking about legacy. It says but when a man dies, all of that begins to perish after the man. It says, but God will redeem me. It's talking of those who are in Christ. God will redeem you from the power of death. It means that when a man who is in Christ dies, he never truly dies. You know that we have the hope of a life after this place. He closes his conversation in verse 20, or he closed his conversation in verse 20. He says, a man that is held in honor and understands it not, is just like the, like the beast that perishes. But this is where I want to focus on. Man that is in honor. If you read, read, read it in the King James translation, we say man that is in honor and knoweth it not is like the beast that perisheth. Man that is in honor. Now we have established proud in today's class that honor is conferred. Honor is conferred by God. Nobody takes honor to themselves. It's not um, when you make 10 million, you go to the village, you give your know, Igwe 2 million and they make you uh, something, something one, and law, law two. That's not what makes you honorable. It's not all the degrees that we have. It's not the PhD, whether it's um, it's uh, studied for is honor is the honor honorary one. Those things are just appellations. It's man that looks at honor from the filter of the things that are on the outside. The way God configured it, and I've said this in, in a million times already, God created man and decided he was going to just put his honor on man. The moment in Genesis chapter one, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, God had made up his mind that man is honorable. Man that is creation, that is a creation of God is honorable already. And I don't want that to slip by you. For you to know that when you have money, you are on, in God's sight, you are, you are full of honor. As long as you are aligned with how God wants, aligning with what God wants you, how, how God wants you to live, that honor will not be taken away. So before we were born, God decided that, oh, you know what? I'm going to put honor on man. Now, when this is, See, the gist of everything I'm going to say to you today, let me just quickly say to you before I get into the book. Because God has created us and put honor on us, when we act any, in any way contrary to someone who has honor, we are like the man that has honor or, or a man that is in honor and doesn't, doesn't understand it. We are like beasts that perish. I don't know whether you get it. So a man is, honor is being put on a man by God. Whether the man has money today or not, in God's sight, in God's eyes, that man is honorable. Now let's say the man decides that he wants to make money fast. He now when goes into arm robbery, kills someone because he's trying to make 10 million so that he can go to the village and the Igwe can give him a, chief, a chieftaincy title. What that man has done is that because he did not know that what he was looking for in Sokoto was already in his Shokoto, he lived contrary to how God created him. Those are the people that God gives over for destruction. 
So let's go to the book. I said in, 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 in page 45, it says, essentially, honor has nothing to do with achievement. It is about the person God has called us to be. As we move on, we will consider a man in honor. Please, can you mute your, 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 your whatever, please? As we move on, we will consider a man in honor. In Psalms 8, we looked at Psalms 8 and the previous class. In verse 1 to 4, in verse, 4, in verse 1 to 6, we write it. But in verse 4 in Psalm 8, the Bible said, What is man that thou art mindful of him? You know, I always like to personalize this scripture to say, who is bidding me? What is bidding me, Lord, that you are mindful of me? The truth is, any man who truly understands who God is will be amazed and dazed at the power of God. It is those who have never encountered God in truth, those who have never truly met God or known God, known God or seen God act, that are casual with God. People who have seen or have found themselves or have been blessed with an encounter with God, they are never casual with God. They are in awe of God. They are amazed at God. So a man who is in honor ought to be amazed at God every day of his life which means that his life will be ordered properly because he knows that God has put honor upon him. So he lives his entire life trying to catch up with the, with the cloak of honor that God has put upon him. If you truly have had an encounter with God, you ought to be amazed that a God that perfect will love a man like you. Today is a good day for you to personalize and say, what is bidding me? that you are mindful of him. You have made me a little lower than the angels, and yet you have crowned me with glory and with honor. If you understand the scripture in Psalm 8 verse 4, you will see that man had done nothing when God decided to put honor and glory upon him. So God decided from the beginning, and he said, he said I'm going to put glory and honor in this package, on this package called man. Anytime this man lives to the fullest or fullest of his potential in glory, in, in honor, my glory will be revealed through him. As my coach would say, we are glory dispensers. What ought to happen every time we walk in honor of God is that we exude glory. God ought to look down every time at your life and think there's some glory to take from here. If you walk in honor, glory will show up. What this mean, means for me is that honor begets glory. It is a man who is in honor that is able to give glory to God. It is a man who lives a life of honor that they can distill glory from his life. So far, I hope you are listening. In Isaiah 29 verse 13, the scripture says, Therefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near to me with their mouths, but their lips do not honor me, but have received, removed their heart far from me. And the fear, their fear is taught by the precept of man. There are people who mouth, oh, I love you, Lord. I do this one, Lord. I do that one, Lord. But the Bible says they honor God with their lips, but their heart is far. Honor comes from within. That's what this is. Honor comes from within. If we read that scripture, um, if you read verse 14 of um, Isaiah 29 in the Amplified Classic Translation, it says, therefore, behold, I will do marvelous things with these people, marvelous and astonishing things, and the wisdom of their wise men will perish, and the understanding of their descending men will vanish. Who are these people that God wants to astound like this? Those are the people who, who with their mouth, who talk about honor, who draw with their mouth, in their lips, but in their hearts, there is no honor. There is no fear of God. Honor begets glory. A man who is in honor, we know to worship God in spirit and in truth. 
because he knows that that's why God put honor upon him. Remember that honor, God lives to our glory. If you look at, for the glory that comes out of our lives, if you read um, 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 Revelation, Revelation it says, thou art worthy, O Lord, for thou art created all things for thy pleasure. They are and they were created. We're created to give God glory. And then God endowed us with honor so that as we align with the honor that is upon our lives, our lives automatically give glory to God. We sing, I love Jesus. He loves me. I surrender all. Yet our hearts are far away from him. Our mouths say one thing and our lives reflect or manifest another. We know how to speak honor, but we do not live honor. Every man pursues, every man, everything man pursues is tied to glory. But if your pursuit is not clad in honor, it may not manifest its, um, it, it may not manifest glory in its equivalent. This explains why the world is breaking down, becoming darker and darker. Every day people are pushing the envelope of dishonor. Children speak to their parents as they want to. It is free for all craziness out there. So bad that one person who might be in the right is considered wrong because the majority is in the wrong and they like it. This reaction to right has now made standing in truth and doing right more and more difficult for those who want to continue to live a life of honor. The point I'm trying to make is that if pursuit is not clad in honor, it will not bet, it will bet catastrophe. Let me say that again. If a man who is pursuing something, if I'm pursuing wealth, for instance, but I'm not doing it with honor, it will end up in catastrophe. Our pursuit of anything must be clothed with honor. Otherwise, it is a bloody waste of our time and of heaven's time. Right, the, right, the right thing is now almost extinct. What used to be wrong is now gradually become, is now deemed as right. And what used to be right is now wrong. Right is gradually becoming extinct. If we ever thought that dinosaurs went into extinction, think about honor. God covered us in honor and glory. That's how powerful we ought to be. But take a look at the indignity and the dishonor that we emanate on a daily basis. And tell me how we can access the power of God when we are living lives that are just dishonorable. When we talk about our leaders without the slightest consideration for their place, when we treat other human beings just as much, you know, anyhow we want to treat them without sitting back to think these people are created in the image of God. When a man is not, it, when a man's pursuit is not clad in honor, that man is just a few days away from exposure and degrade, disgrace. Because the Bible says God covered man with glory and honor. If God covered man with glory and honor, it means that honor is a covering. Honor, honor is, a, is a suit that God puts on man. When man pulls that suit to one corner and begins to pursue things, <clears throat> with gross disregard for honor, what do you think we are couple? That man will end up living his life one day without cover. The day that it matters the most, that man will have no covering. Exposure comes where honor, exposure comes where honor is lacking. I'm not talking good exposure. I'm talking of that exposure that brings people to shame. That happens when people are working and living and lacking in honor. 
when it comes to honor, God made man in three ways. God made man in three ways. Number one, he made man of honor. That is, man doesn't need to go to school to achieve honor. Honor is part of man's DNA. So God created man in honor. Made man of honor rather, not in honor. In the making of man, God said, come, let us make man in honor. I don't know how many of us, you know, when our children were young, they watched Powerpuff, Powerpuff Girls. My children liked Powerpuff Girls. Then their father would watch, watch it. I know they used to say, you know, that they make their whatever, whatever, with a dash of this and this and that. I don't know. I just hear them. Mm, uh, something spice and all things this. There's a dash. That is when God was creating man. That was what, what God did. After he's giving us everything that we have, hands, legs, nose, eye, mouth, ear, hair. After God has given us all of those things, guess the next thing that God did? He said, let me put a dash of honor to garnish them. So every one of us has honor as part of our makeup. That's why I said that God made man of honor. God made man of honor. The second way that when it concerns honor that God made man, he made man in honor. When God was ready to create man, God did not say because he was God the father and was a, you know, he was the head of the Godhead. He did not decide that I will just create man and then everybody can get in line. Instead, what did God do? God called a meeting of the council. He said to God the, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, let us make man. So God honored the other parts of the Godhead when he made you. His process in making you and me was honorable. God create, made man of honor because he splashed honor in our DNA. Then he made man in honor because he considered the Godhead. He considered the Godhead. He had a conversation with them. They agreed together before he made man. The third way that God made man is that he made man. He made man for honor. He made man for honor. That means that he created us, put a dash of honor in us. Before he created us, he made sure that there was no schism in the bone, in the Godhead. They agreed, and then he went to work to make man. Then he made man. And now charge man with the responsibility of living their lives for or, or living his life for honor. So he said, I made you in honor. I made you of honor so that you can live for honor. So uh, this ought to be easy for man to do. To live in honor ought to be easy. We ought to recognize that that is our makeup. It's part of our DNA. And so it ought to come easy to, for us to live life like that. We ought to know that because of these three things, made in honor, made of honor, made for honor. We do life every day with honor and in honor. That means if we're talking to people, there's honor in the room. If we're, whatever we're doing, honor is not something that is up in the rafter that we need to go get. Honor is part of our life. Honor is part of our journey. In Genesis 1, like it's Raquel, they say, go and be fruitful, which is equivalent, the equivalent of go and make your own honor. 
If you are in a team, make sure you get into consultations before you do the things you want to do. Those of us that work within teams in our workplace, we know that if we have a team member who does not consult, but just goes off to do what they want, you know that we are not happy with that team member, right? Because we say they are disrespectful. They are not honoring. But let's think about it carefully. In our lives, the way we live our lives, how many times do we make recourse to God? The God that created us gave us a standard and a template that we should live by. How many of us go to him to live like that? It is worth considering. If we do life with honor, then we are living for honor. Honor is a pillar code of, the, of, of life. Honor is a pillar code. I use both words together. It's a pillar and a code, but I use them together. It's a pillar code. The code that is on a pillar, on the pillar of life. So it, it, God showed us a template of how to live in honor. Make of honor, make in honor, and make for honor. The problem is when we got on earth, we decided to go for this honor. And we're wondering after so many years why things are the way they are. Here's the truth. The world will never be a better place unless we begin to learn to honor each other. If we think about Ukraine, I would think about Russia. If one man was honoring of the other man, there will be no war. If you think about, think about the Palestinians and you think about the Israelites or the people of Israel right now, if one man was honoring of the other man, there will be no problem as we speak. We are praying that wars will cease. We can make wars cease if we just, I'm not saying be born again, just treat the other person, excuse me, treat the other person with the honor with which God is asked us to treat them. The idea that God had was not to make a broken, weak, confused, defeated person. What God had in mind was to make a person who was whole, who was strong, who was aware, who was focused, and who was victorious every time. That's God's goal. That's the kind of person that God made. But if we look at the world around us today, we are more broken, confused, weak, and they are more broken, confused, and weak, and defeated people now than we have ever had in history. There must be something that we ought to learn, understand, and walk in. But we have failed. Consequently, we, have, we find ourselves struggling to arrive at a place of consistent victory. Show me a man who has victory in his life consistently. And I will just tell you that that man is living in honor on every level. Honor for God. Honor for his most vital relationships. Honor for his money. Honor for his body. Honor for his work honor for his business, honor for his leaders. A man who lives in honor, let me tell you, lives in harmony. Because nothing will get broken, nothing will go out of whack if we live our lives in honor. The thing about honor is some of us are living in certain areas in honor, but we're struggling with it. Oh, that's why this teaching is necessary. I mean, at the well, I... I've done my best to make sure that we are a people that are focused on God. I was shocked, therefore, in January when God said, your worship is excessively casual. I was like, hey? He said, your worship is excessively casual. And I realized I was talking of the quality of our service. It's not about our song, our songs and our dance. I was talking about the quality of our service. It's quality of our lifestyle. The quality, and he said, you are casual. If you're supposed to be praying three hours a day, you're praying 30 minutes. The quality of your worship is casual. If you're supposed to be giving a hundred dollars in offering, and you are giving $20, your worship is excessively casual. If you are supposed to, whatever you are supposed to be doing, but you're sloppy in doing it, and it is an assignment that God is giving you, whether automatically your worship is excessively casual. 
And the reason why worship is excessively casual, according to Malachi, is because men are no longer giving God the honor that is due him. How money comes when a man lives a life of honor. That man's life becomes a life of consistent testimonies. I'm not saying that his life is devoid of pain or the things that happen in the world, but he has an equilibrium. When I use that expression, I use it, you know, adversely. He has this stability that nothing can take him out of the path that God has chosen for him. Because his focus is God made me in honor, made me of honor, made me for honor. I must deliver glory at the end. And if honor is not in my life, I cannot deliver glory. Where there is no honor or where honor is lacking, as with every experience in and with God, we find people who are living on focused, unaware, weak lives. And all these are indicative of the gaps that exist because our lives are lived below the standard of his word. Let me explain it in another way. Honor for God in all things and in all ways is to live according to the standard of his word. So if we are, there is any part of our lives where we are not living according to the standard of his word, we are not in honor. That's what it means. So lives are breaking down because men cannot see that living obedience to God's commandments is a matter of honor. That's what it is. We ought not to obey God because we're afraid that he will kill us. That's weak. We're not supposed to be obeying God because we're afraid that something will go wrong. That's very weak. Obedience, when it comes to God, we're obedience or we, we should obey God because we're excited that he's put honor in us and we want to do everything to live our lives in such a way that he takes glory from us. That's what this journey is about. So when a man is unfocused, when a man is living unconsciously negligent, life, you know, uh, unconsciously negligent, when a man is unaware, when a man's life is weak, check it. You will see that that man has gaps in honor. I know when I have gaps in honor, it shows up in many ways in my day-to-day -day activities. The point I'm making, my brothers and my sisters, is we ought to make honor a priority. A man that will go far in God must make honoring others. Honoring God first and honoring others as a way of honoring God must make it a priority. Make honor a priority. Where honor does not exist, men lose focus. Men lose focus. Let me explain it. When a man does not honor his wife, he will lose focus. That's when he would step into adultery. When a woman does not honor, honor her husband, she will lose focus. That's when she will step into adultery. Because then the thing that their sight and their focus is supposed to be on, their sight and their focus is not on those things. Every vice begins with dishonor. When a man will steal from the business or the organization where he works is because of honor, a lack of honor. Because if you live by the code of that establishment, definitely one of the codes will be you can't take what is into yours within the company. You will not take what is into yours. Every vice, at the bottom of every vice is the dishonor. But men don't see it that way. And the reason why we don't see it that way is because we have defined honor to mean what honor is it. Honor is a world full of awards, even though we paid for all of the awards. If you want to give me an award, give me an award. Why do I have to pay for an award? I take exceptions to people who say, oh, we have nominated you for an award. Oh, you have won that category, and but uh, you have to buy a table for 150,000. I usually say to them, I'm sorry, I can't come. I've had that kind of situation where some one other person came and said, oh, we understand that that's a principal matter for you. We will give you the award regardless. And then there were others that said, okay, if you can't pay, and I would say, I'm happy. I've not seen any time that, I've not seen anybody go to the bank and what he presented at the counter was an award plaque and they gave him money he didn't have. So it doesn't matter to me. 
I've not seen someone who was sick on his on the hospital bed say, oh, doctor, take my award plaque, rub it over my body and I'll be well. And it happened. I haven't seen it. So those things don't matter to me. But people will pay and have a whole world dedicated in their houses to our words, but they are very dishonoring in the way they do life. What do I know? In other words, honor your money if you have it. Honor your relationships if you have them. Honor your thought processes. Honor the words you speak. Let them be waiting words that you speak. Words that are powerful and life-giving. When you begin to live in the realm where honor is a priority, things begin to come together. In Romans 8.28, it states that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Do you think it stops at the calling? If they love God, then surely, you know, I taught you this morning, that when we love God, we do what he asks us to do. If they love God, what will automatically follow is that they will obey God. And then as they obey God, things will begin to come together. All things will begin to come together for them. That's the way it works. And unless we understand that, we will keep praying for the things that will make us come together, make our lives come together. But if we're living in dishonor, no matter the prayer, we are negating. We can pray for 10 hours and by one piece of action, negate the, the answer to that prayer. And someone might be asking, is honor this powerful? So only honor. Yes, because at the root of honor is many things. You know, honor is at the root of many things, I beg your pardon. The reason why somebody will not take a child to a school and the child will do two sessions and they will not finish paying school fees and move the child out to another place is because they honor the sacrifice and the service that the school has rendered in educating their child. So they won't get up and just take a child out of school when they have not paid fees without a payment plan. People wouldn't do that. So you find that when in many vices at the root of them is a lack of honor. The more of us believers who are broken, beat up and live stagnant lives, the more people interpret it to mean that our God has lost his power. And that's us dishonoring God. No, we always think that is the people that say, gosh, you know, that just yap anyhow about God. We think, you know, we go on social media and we quarrel with them. How dare you talk about my God like that? But here's the thing. It is the way we have lived. That's why they talk about our God like that. If we're living, uh, running our lives like tight sheets, nobody will talk about our God like that. Go and check it now. How many times do you see people come online to curse out the people, courts? They know their lives are on the line. If you haven't noticed, take proper you know, begin to, to to watch. It's very rare that you come on social media, you see people come on social media and bash a babalawo that they truly know is a babalawo. Why? Because they know if the guy is saying, we'll beg you for it, it's finished. But believers, no matter what God says he will do with us, we, we take it with a pinch of salt. We act dishonorably and we wonder why unbelievers dishonor our God. <laughs> Can you see it? Can you see it? I'm praying that we can see it. Even when we suspect that the Babalawo in our village is not, you know, get power. We don't just go there anyhow. But we'll put a pastor online. We will bash and bash and bash and bash. What do we think we're doing? We're not just dishonoring the man, we're dishonoring his God. Now, did I say that the man was perfect? No, because when it comes to honor, honor is not something we do because someone is perfect. Does that make sense? So the more of us believers who are broken or beat up and live stagnant lives, the more people interpret it to mean that our God has lost his power. They go as far as to say that God is no longer interested in our issues. 
Meanwhile, that's not the truth of the situation. Rather, it is because we have chosen to lead contrary to his will that we find ourselves where we are at. He's a just and fair God. He's not going to break the rules simply because he wants us to look glorious and successful. So we get what we put in. Unfortunately, the word honor, the word measures honor with the yes stick of money. But God doesn't honor, uh, uh, measure honor by anything that we possess. Honor is an inside out work. I have said that before. The irony is that man is, is that a man that is honor hungry, hungry because he's unaware that he's already honored and honorable before God. We pay money just to get two or three letters appended to his name to make him seem honorable. I'm already honored by God. There are many things that if I don't get, they won't change anything. I'm already honored by God. I'm already honored by God. Men see honor by the things that happen outside. God sees honor by the things that happen on the inside. Man will therefore always label the wrong things as honorable because he does not have the capacity to see what is on the inside. If Gehazi could see, Gehazi would never have dishonored Elisha and by extension God by taking anything from Naaman. But Gehazi couldn't see beyond his nose. Man that is in honor and understanded it not, it's like the beast that perished. God has put us in a place of honor. Every time we leave this, this, in any kind of dishonor, it is akin to, according to Psalm 49, it is akin to a man who does not know that he's honored and he's treating himself like whatever. It's like the account of the prodigal son who went off to, in dishonor, went off, burnt what he took from his father. And the next thing he was eating the food that was meant for pigs. That's what happens when a man dishonors. Here's what I'm saying. Identity is the why of honor. Somebody should write that down. Identity is the why of honor. We don't honor because we're afraid to be beat up. We honor because it is who we are. When you think about Nebuchadnezzar, we've, we've, we dealt with that, I think, in the last class. You find that Nebuchadnezzar, he forgot that he wasn't God. Identity is the why of honor. The reason why we can live lives of honor is because God has put honor in us. The reason why God has put honor in us is because of who he's created us to be in his image and his likeness. It is because of how who God made us to be that he has honored us. So identity is the why of honor. So therefore, if I'm created in the image and likeness of God, and God has put his honor on me, if I'm not living honorably, doesn't that mean that I have downgraded myself? That's what it means. I'm the one that downgraded myself, not anyone else. A while ago, we saw the video of a lecturer somewhere in the East who was stripped to his boxers when he was trying to sleep to a student and someone, a student who was married and somebody videoed him and they circulated it on social media. Imagine the embarrassment. But that man's journey started from dishonor. He dishonored his wife. He dishonored his profession. He dishonored the woman who was married to another man. Everything about that particular occurrence was dishonor. He dishonored himself. Because how does a professor or a doctor, uh, it's in caliber, I don't know, I can't remember where. How can a man of that caliber, man, a man who was supposed to be raising other people, how does he bring himself down to one? Um, 
those kinds of people cannot last more than two minutes in sex. And yet look at the embarrassment, the shame, the degradement. That's why I said that when a man is not clad in honor, when pursuit is not clad in honor, it ends up in catastrophe. What separates and distinguishes man from other created beings is that he has within him the DNA of God, also known as the spirit of God. It is the part of man that makes a demand that will live higher, higher than other, other beings that are created by God. And the mere fact that God's spirit is on the inside of us is why we are honoring or we are honored. Does this make sense? So, this higher living includes to live in honor. To disregard that injunction is to decide to live less than we have been created to live. How can someone who is the accountant general of a federation, who was entrusted with the purse of a whole nation, a whole nation trusted him with their money, He's supposed to be the gate man of the national post. He's the one that stole from the national post. All of it started from this one. Every bad behavior that we exhibit, which end up <clears throat> making it difficult for our lives to give glory to God, can be traced to dishonorable living. I'm going to stop here. Because next time when we come, I want to take time <coughs> and bring us to how we can understand honor. 